Dealing with people and interacting with them is probably the biggest problem you'll ever face, especially if you're an introvert and more specifically if you're an introvert working in cybersecurity. Pre-COVID, most jobs were in person. You went to an office, you did your work, and interacted with your coworkers in the office, in person. Now, although a lot of companies are starting to really push back on remote work, it's still very predominant in the tech industry, and more specifically, very predominant in the cybersecurity industry. As a remote worker, it's very important to understand how to communicate in the digital space as the nuances are not quite the same as in-person face-to-face conversations. The book, How to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age, gives so many really good lessons that can help you succeed as a a digital entity and i'll be tying in these lessons into how to succeed as a remote cybersecurity employee link to the book will be in the description below be sure to check it out and read it for yourself now let's get to the video so i've summarized the book into six layers the first one being the layers of engagement second one being the rules of engagement the third one being conversations fourth one being building trust the fifth one being chat etiquette and the sixth one being extras now this is not how the book is segmented however i decided to go through it this way based on my understanding and the notes that i took from the book so let's get right into the first one which is the layers of engagement i broke this down into three layers the micro layer the meso layer and the macro layer the micro layer is the smallest level of interaction and this would be your interaction with your peers your co-workers which are on the same team that you work on so if you work within a unit or a specific team that performs a specific function your interactions will be at the micro layer and these interactions also apply to your manager the person you directly report to the person you have your one-on-ones with the person who is responsible for you as an employee at the company so all of those all of those interactions are classified under the micro layer second layer which is kind of the mid layer is the meso layer which covers your interactions with your other peers and co-workers on other teams so people that might be outside of your team so if you're working uh, for example in a SOC you might have an analyst team or a hunting team or a response team and an engineering team that's responsible for maybe fixing like EDR tools or tuning the content and developing the content so those people would probably be on the meso layer because they're not the direct analyst team you might be working on but they're part of your organization or your team and you also will have to interact with them and the other managers as well so the managers of these teams the directors of these teams or your director so directors typically manage multiple teams so you might report to a director who manages multiple teams so your interactions with this person or individuals at that level is also part of the measure layer the, the third layer which is like the biggest layer uh, covers your interaction in terms of the entire company online in relation to your company and also outside of work so some of your interactions even outside of work have some sort of relation to the work that you do and this fits into the macro layer and these different layers are going to be the basis for which the rules of engagement and the other things we're going to be talking about will build on so this this is the reason why I wanted to kind of give context into my understanding of interactions at these different layers. The book doesn't explicitly cover this, but this is my own sort of uh, lower level coverage of the, this first layer. This is my own sort of introduction and context into how these interactions fit in to remote cybersecurity work. The next part is the rules of engagement and this actually covers how you actually interact and deal with people within your organization either at the micro meso or macro layer a lot more for the micro layer because it's people they're interacting with on a daily basis now i'm not going to go over everything the book covered but just some really key points that are really important in terms of working as a remote service credit employee we're going to have a lot of tough interactions that we have to deal with especially with other people on the team so there's some ways that you you should respond to things and some ways you should not respond to things um, one key rule of thumb is to avoid criticizing condemnation or complaining and instead critique affirm what is good and surface issues without blame so there will be times where you have to have difficult conversations or have to respond to specific things and the best way might not be to criticize or condemn or blame someone or complain about something but rather you know approach these different issues in a different light especially if it's a remote work in this case and also whenever the differences between criticizing and criticizing taken and criticizing is typically personal destructive vague ignorant selfish however on the other hand critiquing is impersonal constructive specific informed and selfless now these words sound very similar but they have different use cases in the sense that criticizing is a lot more destructive it's a lot more vague it's a lot more coming at the person for what they've done or what they've said what they are putting out there but critiquing is a different approach in the sense that you are given a more constructive response and a more positive response to whatever this interaction is. I think it's a key rule of thumb in terms of overall interactions, either at the micro, meso, or macro layer um, in terms of interactions with people um, you're working with as a 
or more employee. And I think it should be the basis of your conversations in general because a lot of times your conversations are typically reactions or responses to things other people have said and these could be very helpful in those interactions. And always remember that if all you do is criticize, you're pretty much putting yourself in a position to lose connections before they're made. Working remotely doesn't really give you the flexibility to connect with people the same way working in an office or in person does. In a sense that working in an office, you can just walk up to someone at the desk or meet in the office and at lunch, the water cooler, the coffee station, and you build a connection there. But if you are that person who's known uh, to always criticize in Slack or Teams or whatever sort of messaging platform you use at work, you already lose connections before they're made you kind of build this wall around yourself that makes it harder for people to want to interact with you in the first place so definitely something to look out for and no one really wants to be around someone who's always complaining so definitely keep that in mind Next, I think this goes into conversations. Now, communication in terms of like chats and digitally is something that is kind of weird in some sense as it's not really our natural or default way of communication. We tend to communicate better, like naturally our communication method is face-to-face -face communication, interacting interact with people in person. People see our facial expressions, our intonations, our body movements, and this helps them understand the different things we're saying and correlate them with, with our emotions in real time. However, over the internet, digitally, over chat, whatever the case is, the way we interact with people is completely different in the sense that we are sort of using text and emojis to interact with people, which is not exactly how we're naturally wired to interact. So it's important to kind of understand the rules for this sort of digital interactions because it could make or break your connections and interactions with people as a remote employee. So first thing or a rule of thumb is to always leave a good impression. So smile either in the chat or even in a zoom call so zoom calls or um, video calls are a lot more personable in the sense that you're able to see face facial expression and interaction but not the same way you would in in the real world but it's always good to smile either in the zoom call or in the chat the smiley emoji is always good to add but of course be careful with how you use emojis and i'll go over that in a second as well use names when you're interacting with people so when you're in a video call or you know a voice call it's great to use names because it makes you a lot more personable and it just builds that interaction so people feel a lot more connected to you when you refer to them with their name. So rather than saying something like, hello, you know, no name, you can just say hello, person name. So hello, James, hello, John, hello, whoever, right? Call them by their name or even in an interaction, you know, refer to their name as you're talking at them. It makes them feel a lot more personable. So this definitely helps with building connections as a remote uh, employee. Finally, uh, it's great to really listen more. And this is both at the micro, mezzo and macro level. And even outside of remote work, it's really good to really listen to people before responding to them. Sometimes people just fail to listen and just want to get their own point across without really hearing any the other person's opinion don't be that guy who always just wants to talk um, without one wanting to hear what other people want to say it doesn't have a good look and you're not going to earn any good points with anyone for that so listen more and you know based off of what you've heard reply and you know make good conversation on, on that next thing is building trust building trust with your with your co-workers or your peers or your manager is an important part of working remotely you're probably not going to ever see any of your co-workers or your manager if you're working remotely in person but except you work at a company that flies people periodically or if you work at in a hybrid situation or if you get an opportunity to go to the workplace physically you might never meet your co-workers in person so it's important to build trust and building trust over the internet is not the easiest thing to do in the sense that you know we're behind screens we don't see each other we don't know the person's attentions or emotions or expressions so it's hard to kind of tell what the intention this person has and it's really important to know how to build trust with people it really helps with your interaction with your co-workers peers managers whatever the case is so first thing here is to avoid arguments at all costs it doesn't get you anywhere at all don't be that guy that wants to get the point out all the time by arguing with people and disagreeing with people although tough conversations need to be had they can exist without arguments so find ways to get your thought across without having to argue with people secondly admit fault quickly and emphatically so if you're wrong just admit you're wrong if you made a mistake admit 
admit it. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone makes mistakes and it's totally fine. People above you have probably made mistakes in the past. The key thing is to always admit when you're wrong and just move on from there. Typically, people are not looking to crucify you for your mistakes, especially in companies that accept people making mistakes. Some companies have a culture of blaming people when they make mistakes. Some companies have a culture of not blaming people in the sense that the goal is not to make you feel bad about your mistakes, but to help you learn from them and make sure you do better um, next time. So when you're wrong, just admit it. Now, to build on that, avoid telling people they're wrong. So people are inevitably gonna be wrong from time to time, whether in interactions, explanations, things to say, technically, non-technically, people are gonna say the wrong thing sometime, but blatantly or outrightly telling someone that they're wrong makes them a lot more defensive and leaves a sour taste in their mouth. That would not earn you any credit points with anybody if you're blatantly telling them that they're wrong. So rather than tell someone they're wrong, lead to the truth with questions. So ask questions that would lead them to the truth or respond with factual corrections that kind of point to the right thing. So, so for example, rather than saying you're wrong, you say things like, I'm sorry to disagree, but, or something like, actually, I think this or that, or something like, maybe there might have been an oversight here. We should probably take a look at this, right? Something, something along those lines, but not blatantly telling someone that they're wrong. This will not earn you any credit points, whether in person or remotely. Next, it's important to have good chat etiquette. A lot of your conversations are going to be over chat, either that be Slack or Teams or whatever messaging platform you're going to be using to interact more, especially at the micro level with your team, your manager, coworkers, your peers, whatever the case is. So it's really important to understand how to use use chat correctly. So first and foremost, understand how to use punctuations. If you're having interactions or typing messages, know how to use commas or exclamations when necessary, periods when necessarily. It makes it a lot more easier to read what you're saying. So people just like jumble up what they're saying into like really long blobs of text, which is hard to read. So you definitely don't want to be that person who just like jumbles things together. Um, but learn how to use punctuation and also learn how to fit into the tone of the conversation. So sometimes some companies have more serious conversation tones because of the environment or the nature of the company but some companies are a lot more informal more relaxed so it's important to kind of know how to communicate in the same tone as people at the company same with your co-workers or right? some people are really jovial know how to communicate the same tone it's just the same way as which you would communicate in person in a sense that if someone is communicating with you at a certain level or using a certain voice range or frequency range like it's kind of there's a way by which we naturally mimic or imitate that person in order to in order to build a conversation and make sure we're going we're on the same level conversation wise so learn how to fit into the tone of a conversation over chat next understand the use of uppercase this is really important for emails and chat as well so uppercase typically kind of means you're yelling or you you're trying to like emphasize a point very seriously and knowing when to use it appropriately is really important because you don't want to come off as being aggressive or you know being uh, very enthusiastic when you don't really mean to be so it's important to know how to use uppercase when needed. Next is checking your messages for typos. So of course, when you're typing, you might have typos. It could be frustrating if you send messages with typos or they're not coherent. It gets frustrating when people are trying to read those messages and don't understand it. And it could also lead to misunderstandings overall because like what you're, you might be saying might not be properly understood in the sense that what you're trying to say might mean something else and you might mean something else entirely as well. So check your messages for typos. Next, you don't paragraphs and bullet points so if you're if you're sending long blurbs of text please segment them into paragraphs or bullet points to make it a lot more easier the goal is to ensure that in your chat or your email when you're communicating you're making sure that you're making it easier for the person on the other end to understand what you're saying right it's not a face-to-face -face conversation so you have to make it as easily digestible for the person on the other end of that screen also i talked about emojis earlier on so know how to use them and again this kind of also fits into the tone of the conversation if you're in a company that that's a lot more serious and a lot more uh, very, very structured or very, very particular about how you do certain things um, online in, in chat or, you know, whatever conversation means you use at your company, then maybe don't use emojis. But if you're in an environment that's a lot more chill, a lot more jovial, people are a lot more expressive, then feel free to use emo uh, emojis, but use them 
appropriately so not the way like not the way people just kind of spam emojis unnecessarily just no one to use emojis smiling emoji laughter emoji crying emoji funny emojis as well right and finally always think before you send especially in situations where you're heated up or you're you know you have strong emotions or opinions about something think before you send think is this message worth the consequences that it could possibly yield as a result of me sending it so definitely think twice um, before you send a message of that nature finally some extras would be to take interest in other people's interests. This is just to make you more likable, right? So in order for people to generally take interest in you, most times you have to first of all be interested in them. So people might be interested in things like sports or things like food or martial arts or working out or books, whatever that is. If someone has an interest in something, ask them about it. People love talking about themselves and it earns you really good credibility points with them if you take an interest in what they like. Now, this doesn't mean you should be fake with your interactions, but it definitely helps if you truly care about something that someone else cares about and they're happy to talk about it with you so keep that in mind next leave others a little better so if you're having a conversation with someone and there's any way that you could leave them a little better do it whether that be making their day being funny whatever the case is leave them a little better they would definitely remember you for it next is your facial expressions and composure so this applies more to zoom conversations or video conversations as an african person i tend to be very facially expressive just because of the nature of how i grew up where i grew up in we're naturally very facially expressive as Africans. So I have kind of learned to, you know, know how to kind of understand my facial expressions and make sure that my facial expressions are not giving off the wrong impression during conversations. So it's important to understand your facial expressions and your composure in video conversations. Next, stay connected. So there are definitely people in your organization that you want to keep having interactions with and conversations with. So it's important to stay connected with them, either that be through recurring conversations, monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, whatever the cases right you know people are typically more than willing to have recurring conversations in order to stay connected finally this is the last tip which involves social media etiquette in this day and age almost everyone has a social media account or two or five or ten so it's important to understand that people are watching whether you realize it or not so if there are things that you wouldn't want to be associated with you you wouldn't want your manager your co-worker your peers to associate with you don't post them don't interact with them or just keep your account private so that you know you have a lot more privacy but that's really it more than ever understanding digital interactions is extremely important and could make or break your experience as a remote cybersecurity employee so i hope this video gave you some really good lessons and tips you can apply to be better as a remote cybersecurity employee let me know in the comments below was there anything i left out or was i a little bit out of touch with some of the things that i mentioned thanks for watching the video and i will see you in the next video Bye bye